I think we're going to get started. Uh, again, hey, thanks for joining us on your Memorial Day weekend. I think it's awesome that you decided to take time with us. Um, we are kicking up a new, kicking off a new series of conversations. Let's let's check this again. Who's really excited to be done with the last series that we did? Okay, we got two in the back. We got okay. Now it's coming out. Everybody's like, get the heck out of that conversation. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to defend myself on that series for 30 seconds. What you think about the end really matters. And a lot of the things we've thought about the end have informed the ways we've acted in the present. So I know that wasn't fun, but all of you who said that you don't love it, your homework is to go watch all those videos one more time. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. We're starting a new series today. It's going to be much more ground level. And we're going to be doing it for 10 weeks. But I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. It's going to take us mostly through the summer. Um, but first, I need to ask this. Who in here considers themselves a, like a good gardener? Anybody? You're good. You got a green thumb. I've never understood that expression. Nobody? Yes! All right. Well, good company. I know we got the fishers out there, potentially. We got the fruits who, like, these are gardening people. I'm a lazy gardener, very lazy. Uh, here's what I mean by that. A couple of years ago, a few seasons ago, I started gardening. Thought it sounded like a good idea, so I started with one tomato plant, and I planted it in the backyard where the people before us had had some garden situation, it looked like. Weeks passed. This thing is not growing. It looks like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. It's like wilting over. I'm like, what is going on? Then I consulted with uh, our resident expert on gardening, Evan Fruits. So I was like, what's going on with this plant? He's like, dude, it's not getting any sun. How, how, uh, I'm, I must not be very smart. <laughs> Plants need sun to grow. Did you know this? So I moved it out. Uh, relocated it, and it started to thrive just as the frost for fall came and killed it. So my first season at gardening, not so great. Uh, second season, I kept the garden in that location, added, put a new tomato plant in, spearmint, added a pepper plant. We, by the end, we had so many cherry tomatoes, we were getting like 10 to 20 a day out of that one plant. It was awesome. The spearmint was taking over the garden. The green pepper plant died because it was getting dwarfed by the tomato plant. And now I'm in season three. I still have done, why am I a lazy gardener? I've done zero research. No reading, no YouTube videos, and I'm just planting stuff. Trial and error. I put marigolds around the raised garden, um, planted cilantro, spinach, carrots, the spearmint plants back up and going. I started green pepper seedlings inside, gonna plant tomatoes today. I don't know if it's gonna go well because I haven't done any homework. I'm a lazy gardener, but we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it goes well. Um, here's, here's the point of that story. Um, I love the fruit. I love that process. It was so cool to plant seeds this season and to see that seed. I mean, you know what a pepper seed looks like. That plant now is about six inches tall. It's so cool to see that. It's, it's like the miracle of God's creation. I love uh, planting trees and seeing them grow. You can take a seed of a tree, a little seed, and in, in 50 years, that'll be 50 feet tall. It's a miracle, you know? I love to see the fruit. I don't wanna do the homework I don't want to invest the time and energy to like maximize it. And I find that sometimes um, we can be like that with faith. We, we want the fruit of, of the spirit as we're going to talk about. We want the spiritual fruit in our lives. We want the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. But maybe because we've been harmed by the church, harmed by other Christians, we give up on the good gardening, or we let other things infiltrate our lives and keep us from investing the best things of ourselves 
that will bring about good fruit for us, good fruit for our neighbors, fruit that is good for the kingdom of God. We're talking about that today. So here's what I want to ask you. These are our conversations. What fruit is coming from the garden of your life? I know you're going to need a minute to think about that. I know it's a little hokey. If your life is a garden, I think about those stupid t-shirts, life is a garden, dig it. If your life is a garden, what fruit is coming out of your garden, if you're honest? Um, the fruits of the Spirit, as we're going to read about, are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. What fruit is coming out of your life? I'll wait. I'm trying to monitor things online. I'm going to sit here until one of you talk. Empathy. What was that? Empathy. Empathy. You're, the garden of your life is producing empathy. That's a good fruit to produce, yeah? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. One of the fruits of the Spirit. Caleb Lane says, Joe Dirt references in Sunday conversation for the, for the win. That was the sun. Life's a garden, dig it. We've got empathy, we've got faithfulness. What else? What, what is, what's the garden of your life producing? Patience with your dad. Oh, patience with your dad. Sometimes people stand with us in our garden and help us produce certain fruit. We have a kindness online. Kindness online. Sobriety. Sobriety. Amen. Amen. All right, man. Garden of my life is sowing friendship. I like that. Person saying like I'm investing in friendship. I like that. All right, everybody's being kind to yourself though. Any stuff growing up in that garden that's uh, not, not the way God intended you to live. All right, I'll start, I'll help you out. Okay, that's very specific. Dad, I love you, I know you. He says something that's, garden, that's grown up in his garden is a foul mouth. Weeds. I said it this week in one of our meetings. A thing that grows up and takes over my garden is ambition. It chokes the good fruit in my garden. What about you? Anxiety is growing up in your garden, Christy. Thank you for sharing that. Charity says self-control on hers. Thank you. What else? What's growing in your garden? I think my mouth is not. I don't curse, but my mouth, uh, a lot of times I'll speak before I think, and then small group things like that. I don't want to make Jesus cry, but I think oftentimes when I say something without thinking, I Hmm. Hmm. Maureen shared that part of the weeds in her garden is that she feels like she makes Jesus weep or cry because she doesn't think about what she's saying, says something about a neighbor. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, looks like we have a no sound. Are we okay online? Let's get some thumbs up online. Is our sound okay online? It's there, okay. Uh, anxiety, we have another anxiety online. We have criticism and judgment are some of the weeds. I think for me, it's a lot easier to be more kind to people that are in your direct help. Or like, you're around them all the time, so like you make it a point to be kind to people at work or people you come across, but it's the people you're closest to that I think probably get the Frustrations or anxieties or stuff like that. So I have to weigh the intentional, like, not um, just practicing that when you're home. All right, I'm going to do a 10 second recap of that, sister. Um, that's good. I can feel that too. Um, sometimes you'll produce really good fruit with like some some of the more distant relationships, but the hardest relationships to bear good fruit are the ones that are closest. Sometimes the people yeah, that are closest. 
You're so comfortable. You're really yourself. So you might, that might be a good question for us to think about. When you're really yourself, what are you producing? Anger. Anger? Thank you for sharing that. Pessimistic. Pessimism growing up in there. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Inward. Inward, yeah. The good news about telling the truth about the weeds that are growing up is that that's the first step towards like bringing some good fruit back in. The church has used the word repent as a weapon and not spoken about it as the life-giving thing that is. Repent is a word that means to just turn. Just turn in another direction. Change your heart and life. So that's what, when you tell the truth about what your garden's producing, the weeds, you're turning. Turning your eyes toward Jesus as the song goes. All right, keep them coming. Um, we are starting a series today called Inspired, What Happens When We Live by the Spirit. It's going to be super practical. Yes, we'll have some heady moments in there. But we're going to talk about, like, how do the things, how does the fruit of Jesus, love, joy, peace, and the like, grow up in our garden? How do we live essentially as we're intended to live? Not as like a checkbox thing, which that's religion gone bad. Is when we're like, we got our checkbox every day, like, okay, did I do a little bit of love today? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did a little bit of love. A little bit of patience. Not too much. It was okay. Check mark on that one. Self control, check. Okay, good. All right. Not too much judgment, a little bit, because that person's not, I don't like that person. They deserve it. Okay. Um, so we're, we're talking about that. What happens when we live by the Spirit? It's one of the values of our church. Number one, we want to fix our eyes on Jesus and live by His Spirit. All the doctrines, all the behaviors, everything gets right if we do that. Fix our eyes on Jesus, live by His Spirit. I'm going to read you a passage that's going to inform this entire series in a minute that I hope will really bless your life. Um... Man, Sue, I'm sorry that you're not getting any sound. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out. We'll help you out for maybe next week. Sorry about that. Um, so you're going to hear this here in this passage, this talk of like the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about spirit. What is Holy Spirit? You'll hear about fruit and Holy Spirit, and you'll also hear this guy talk about weeds or the fruit of... The one thing that he says is a threat to like your garden. But the good news is this. It's proven true in my life. No matter what you feel today, if you feel stuck, if you feel hurt, if you feel unmotivated, if you feel confused, if you feel lost, the good news of Jesus is this. If we are rooted in Christ, and we are intentional about living by the Holy Spirit, we will produce this fruit. It's not a matter of if. If we're rooted in Christ, living by His Spirit, we will produce this fruit in our garden that is good for us, good for our neighbors, and good for the kingdom of heaven. It's not just about you. It's not just about me. We talked a lot about that. Being a Christian is not about individual salvation. It's a group project. If we're rooted in Christ, live by his spirit, we'll produce this fruit that's good for us, good for our neighbors, and good for the kingdom of heaven. The fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Listen into this for a minute. I need this handy dandy mic stand back. Because you need your hands to Just a second while I navigate. This is Galatians. A guy by the name of Paul went around planting a bunch of new faith communities. 
throughout the area of the world around the Mediterranean Sea. He was in north of the Mediterranean Sea around like modern day Turkey in a place called Galatia. And he was not happy with these people in Galatia. Um, so he writes them a letter to like, say like, hey, you all need to turn around. And this is toward the end of that letter, letter to the Galatians. This is chapter five, verse 16 to 24. He says to them, I say, be guided by the spirit and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the spirit and the spirit is set against one's selfish desires. So if you were, were having a test at 1020, question one is what's the biggest threat to spirit, to the fruit of the spirit? I'm giving you the answer. Selfishness. There's no test. You already knew that though, didn't you? I lied. They are opposed to each other. So you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you're being led by the Spirit, you aren't under the law. We'll under, under, unpack that term, the law, another day. We're not going to hit heavy on that today. You're like, what, what law? The actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious. Pause. Man, we are, we are humans. We, are just, we do the same things over and over and again and expect different results. Historically, we've taken this list I'm about to read you, and we made it a list. Like, these are the only bad behaviors that you should not be up to, and as long as you're not doing them, you're good. You're going to make it to heaven, which again is not the point of everything. The kingdom of heaven is, come to, is coming to earth. We're restoring the earth with Jesus where eternity is. But we read this, and we go, okay, I'm going to make a list. I'm not doing that one, not doing that one, not doing that one. I did that a little bit, but not as much as my coworker. I'm not doing that one. And then, historically in the church, we walk around like, ooh, that person's doing that one. <laughs> Good thing I'm not that person. He could make a list in this book of 50 more things, because he's not giving you a list. He's saying, if your heart is set on selfishness, your garden will produce things like this. You with me? So he says... Sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, and casting spells. I'm glad he mentioned that because a lot of you have been casting spells. Andrew, I know you've been doing it. <laughs> Hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition. I've never done that one. Conflict, selfishness, group rivalry. That never happens in our world. Jealousy, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. Do you hear it? Other things like that. I warn you, as I have already warned you, that those kind of things don't, won't inherit God's kingdom. Interpret that sentence through the series we just did. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against things like this. You can produce them as much as you want until the kingdom comes. There's no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified self with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. Let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. We're going to spend our last few minutes unpacking that, starting to, and then we're going to do another nine weeks on that passage. It's going to be concrete, not heady stuff. I want to help you help myself get the weeds out of my garden, actually invest a little time and energy into the fruit and not be a lazy gardener, and get to taste and see the goodness of Jesus' fruit. That's what our summer is going to be about in here. The fruit of the Spirit, inspired. What happens when we live by the Holy Spirit? We are meant to live inspired lives. 
where the breath of God is the breath in our lungs, helps us to live and see differently. All right? Test time. What was the number one threat to the fruit of the Spirit? Hey, you passed the test. Good job. Let's spend about two minutes on selfishness. Obviously, his assumption here is that these people have already given their lives to Jesus. That's why he's writing the letter. These people have decided they want to set out after Jesus. They want to seek after Jesus. He's saying, if you're going after Jesus, here's something that can threaten your maturity. We're not meant to be babies in Jesus. We're meant to grow up. We're not just meant to eat or drink milk. We're supposed to have solid food. Here's what can threaten your garden, selfishness. We think of that as like a really, the worst thing in the world, being selfish. Here's the truth. There's a good side of selfishness. For a time, selfishness can help us survive. Sometimes we're selfish because harm happened to us. Trauma happened to us. We went through hardship, and in order to deal with that hardship, we built in selfish protection. A false self that helped us to survive after the trauma. Are you with me? It's not a bad thing. It helped us to survive. But it's also not how we're meant to live. It ultimately won't result in fruit that is good for us, good for our neighbors, and good for the kingdom of heaven. The false self serves us for a time, but we're meant to grow up into the true self. The self inspired by the Holy Spirit, which has a garden producing the fruits of Jesus. The false self keeps us alive, but it will not raise us from the dead. We're meant to be a true self, rooted in Christ, inspired by the Spirit, producing the fruits of the Spirit. I'll give you an example. Ambition is the selfish thing I did and do to protect myself. I learned at an early age with my insecurities and things I've gone through in my childhood, if I get A's and trophies, everybody likes me. I don't have to deal with the hardship. That served me for a time. It did not raise me from the dead. What is that for you? Since we're running short on time, I won't get answers back on that, but think about it. What is it for you? What does selfishness look like in your life? What are the things that you do to protect yourself, to insulate yourself from more pain, trauma, or at the very least, confusion and discomfort? Because we do that too. For instance, we surround ourselves with people who think and talk like we do because when we have to entertain opinions with which we disagree, it causes us confusion and discomfort, which is a form of selfishness. What does selfishness look like for you? Here's the good news. This writer says it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. If you give your life to the person of Jesus and say, hey, I wanna see, I wanna go after you, Jesus. My life belongs to you. And you live by the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead intentionally, your garden will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. It's not a matter of if, it's gonna happen. Is that not good news? Does anybody in here not want more love and joy and peace in their life? If you, if you don't, let's talk. If you don't want more love, but again, this fruit is not about you. It is about you. God finds joy in your joy. Jesus said, I've said these things in John 15, so my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. God's joy is in your joy, but it's not just about your joy. It's about your neighbor's joy, and it's about the joy of the kingdom of heaven taking over the earth. It will happen, folks, if we're rooted in Christ 
and live intentionally by the Spirit. That is the good stuff. It's the good news. It's like when I rode around with my brother-in-law recently. Um, I'm closing up here. See, look, we're not going to have as long of conversations as we did with heaven and hell on the point of everything. Aren't you glad? Short, practical, on-the-ground conversations to help you produce this fruit. I was riding around with my brother-in-law. He's a farmer. Rode around with him in two, two hours while he planted this field. And he was describing the process. Farming technology is legit, by the way. He was like, look at that old timer over there. <laughs> he was like, in a way, though, that's kind of cool what he's doing. He kind of regretted all the technology he had. Run that metaphor around your head for a while. Um, that's not the point. I rode around with him, and he was describing, like, they have down to a science, like, how the yield of this field. Like, he knows, barring catastrophic weather, in fact, they've put things in place like field tile and stuff like that, so that even with catastrophic weather, this field is going to produce a certain yield. It's going to happen. And he's going to get a drive past that field for the coming weeks and watch what he planted. And you know what he's also going to get to do? He's going to get to go back to that field and harvest it. We get to do the same thing because Christ is so darn good. We do not have to keep reaping the fruit of selfishness. But we must be intentional. This is the closing point today. Ross, I'm in. I would like to bear that fruit that is good for me, good for my neighbors, and good for the kingdom of heaven. I'm in. How? Every week we're going to have a practical thing for you to consider. 60 seconds on the Holy Spirit and then the practical point, and then we're done. All right? Then happy Memorial Day. Hopefully you have the day off. Hopefully you're just going to lie around the pool or something tomorrow and celebrate God. Anybody got to work? Yes! Good. 60 seconds on the Holy Spirit. Ross, I love it, but what in the world is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. Well, that was quick. I didn't even need 60 seconds. We're good with God the Father, God the Son. Jesus is God's son in flesh, showing us the heart of God. The spirit is God in us. Jesus says, I got to leave so the spirit can enter into your system and teach you everything that I've taught you. It is the personal presence of God dwelling inside you. Anything that you do with Christ will be by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why the name of our series is inspired. It's rooted in a word for breath. The spirit is like the breath in your lungs. The Hebrew word for spirit means breath or wind. Take a big deep breath in. Breathe it out. That's what the spiritual life is like. You breathe in the Holy Spirit, you breathe out the fruit of the spirit. Spirit is like the wind in your sails, the sails of your boat. But it is God. Our goal is to be more and more aware of the Spirit with us as we follow Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. We'll do that every week, talk more about the Holy Spirit because it's hard to get. How do you do that? Point one for today. Every time you do a spiritual practice, every time you do one, you are breathing in the Holy Spirit. What's a spiritual practice? Hello, we're doing it. When you gather in community like this, that's what, what's powerful about Sundays, folks. We do a lot of spiritual practices at once. We pray. Prayer is a spiritual practice that's meant to help you grow in your awareness of the Spirit and let the wind of the Spirit get into your sails. Prayer is not a time for you to get, God, do you love me more? Because I, I just pray really well. It was really like seven-syllable words. Did you like it? No, it's, it's, it's a spiritual practice that gets the Spirit into your sails. Every time you pray, you're growing in the Holy Spirit. So go pray. Go get into your garden and pray. I'm not a good prayer, Ross. I don't know what to say. Stop that. 
Get into your garden. Get your hands dirty. Breathe. Pull some weeds out. Say, God, this might be a weed. Can you help me yank it out? Pray. Every time you pray, you're growing in the spirit. Every time you wrestle with this, these words, which this is a hard book. The Bible is so hard to understand sometimes. I've been reading it since I was in high school. Like, seriously. I read passages, I'm like, what in the world is that? But it's not about getting it. It's about growing in the spirit. So go read. Talk about it with your friends. Let the wind get into your sails. Every time you serve your neighbor, every time, it's a spiritual practice. You're growing in the spirit. Every time you give, it's a spiritual practice. Listen to this. Anything and everything can be a spiritual practice if you pray as such. Exercise can be a spiritual practice. Before you run, get on the elliptical. Whatever your thing is, God, thank you for the gift of my body. I hope to steward it well as I work out. Make me aware of your Holy Spirit as I run, walk. You just turn exercise into a spiritual practice. You just turn that mundane thing into growing in the spirit. Here's the flip side of it. You can do a lot of religious stuff that's not a spiritual practice because your mind and heart don't see it as such. All right, I'm going to show up to church today and then hear the sermon and then go out to lunch and then go about my day. All right, I'm going to give now because it's what I'm supposed to do. And so I'm going to give some money to the church because it's what I'm supposed to do. And I hope it, you know, whatever. Whatever you do, everything you do, invite the Holy Spirit into every compartment of your life. May there be no compartment where the Holy Spirit is not allowed. Invite the breath of God into that, into every piece. And you will grow in the Spirit. Every time you do a spiritual practice, you are growing in the presence of God in your system. So go do it. Let's get to gardening. Let's pray. God, thank you that if, for this truth, that if we're, if we're rooted in you, if we're paying attention to your presence with us, your Holy Spirit, like breath in our lungs, we're going to produce new fruit. Help us to do that. Help all of us to be more aware of the Holy Spirit in the days to come. Your presence with us. Help us to go after Jesus, to be aware of your Holy Spirit, and to celebrate the fruit, God. Help us to celebrate it and share it in the name of Christ. Amen.